Ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. So it's clear that the, uh, the volume doesn't uh, quite come through on this for some reason. It was working on Friday, but I'll figure out exactly what's going on. It should come through on HDMI. So I thought that it was kind of interesting that this is well, an interesting summer this year. Uh, it was uh, the 50th anniversary on July 20th of uh, the moon landing and, and return. Quite an auspicious occasion. Of course, uh, that is in my lifetime, uh, just. But of course, for you, it's uh, two and a half lifetimes ago, probably. If you're a rising junior, a risen junior, I guess, today, uh, then you're probably 20. You'll be able to drink sometime this year, I guess, right? Is uh, the kind of schedule, if you're not already. Drink legally uh, this year. Um, and uh, so 50 years ago, it's probably two and a half lifetimes ago. The other interesting thing I thought uh, was that there's the other thing that was on TV uh, this summer was Woodstock, which of course was 50 years ago uh, today as well. But something your parents or maybe your grandparents uh, went to, uh, which is also kind of to, to think that those two things, one in terms of huge technology and one in terms of counterculture and a new way and a new generation asserting itself, are kind of interesting things to, to juxtapose against each other, I thought. But anyway, so. The reason for looking at uh, the Apollo mission, of course, is it's fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics is, is all around us. Uh, it's how our world basically works. And so in this class, hopefully you're here for EME 303 fluid mechanics. It pervades everything that we do, from the rains that rained on Woodstock and shut down the last day, to uh, the thrust of uh, the Saturn V rockets uh, pushing the, uh, the landing, mo the, the lunar module uh, into the sky and the thrust of the descending lunar module in zero degree, zero or close to one-sixth gravity of the Earth are all parts of uh, the interplay in terms of fluid mechanics. And so today is the day that we will embark on that interesting journey uh, to, to do that. And so hopefully you're here for uh, this fluid mechanics class. How can you see that? Is it OK? At the back? Can you hear me at the back? How's the thumbs up? I can barely see that. <laughs> so let's get where we are. So so that's where we are for. Uh, so the things that we want to deal with today are first, uh, you'll know the course delivery materials. And so maybe the things we want to do today in terms of Canvas is look at homework. So things that you might want to come away with on your device would be the homework assignments. You may not want to, of course. Uh, and the other is uh, 10 years of exams. Uh, and uh, linked to Canvas, uh, is my material, who I haven't introduced myself yet. And so if you need to find the other materials, they're online as well. And so they're linked through Canvas, but you have a syllabus with you which we'll go through. Um, and I guess that's, and also the, the course resources material. So those are the maybe the four things that we'll deal with today. And so, as I maybe didn't say explicitly, but alluded to, uh, my name's Derek Elsworth. Uh, the, uh, I'll be responsible for the conduct of the course uh, in this classroom. Uh, we have two uh, TAs uh, with us. Uh, Ji Hao Wang is the main coordinating TA who's here, and we'll talk about his activities with And uh, Zach Moore, is an undergraduate uh, TA who was in your position exactly one year ago, um, sitting in this as a class, uh, and is now a, a TA. And so each year, there's always an undergraduate TA to spend time helping you with homework assignments, should understand things from your level. Uh, this year, I sent out to the people who scored above 100% in the class 
Zach was one of the 10 or so people and the first to respond, and so uh, he's here with us now. So that's our activities. So if uh, you're looking for the course materials, everything is posted online in Canvas. Let's see if this works. I think it works. I never realized that it worked this way quite. Uh, hopefully not everyone here is logging on at the same time. Interesting user ID, just like yours, right? Uh, Penn State, and all the time that I've been here, uh, has always had this idea of using your initials uh, initially when there weren't so many users, and then using a number after it, usually a one, and then two digits, three digits, now four digits. So I'm not sure exactly, you know my name, I'm not sure exactly how I got FKD uh, as a moniker. Uh, I guess you could think what that might be <laughs> in some respects if you want to joke about it. Uh, let's see if it'll do it. Dialing. It's not getting me. Oh, it's because there's no service in here. This is going to be a problem, isn't it? So let's see. Let's try it again. No service. All right. Is there a backup plan? Enter a passcode. Um, all right. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe they cut it off so you can't use your phones when you're in class. Who knows? But I don't have any service. Well, fine. There's always a backup plan, so we can't quite use uh, Angel. So the other way to do it, certainly we have uh, internet. And so if you need to find me, you can find it as DerekElzer.com, or you can just search for me on Google. And if you do that, you can see that I've already searched myself. We're so narcissistic these days. Probably the first hit you get will be me. There you go. And all the materials that you need for this class are served up to you on this uh, resources page. Um, and so everything that we'll deal with today almost uh, is available on, on there. Um, the first thing, uh, I can make it larger. I know that if I make this full screen, some of it disappears off the side, so I won't make it full screen. Uh, we're still on the screen. Just. Um, if you look at the materials that are online, and then the syllabus probably is the first thing you have. So you have a version of this. I hope your eyes are good. It's right here if you need some. Come in. Uh, hope your eyes are good for this. Uh, I print this off because I think it's kind of a contract. Uh, it may change, but it won't change very much. But it's basically a contract of the, the conduct of this class. So we'll spend some time talking about uh, uh, that material today. Um, so the class is fluid mechanics. It really involves the world around us. Uh, the lecture here is uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, uh, 8 a.m., bright and early, uh, because we can get a big enough room. It used to be a 330 student class. Uh, now this year it's 150. I don't think that's anything I've done. I think it's what enrollment controls have done within our department. Uh, this class is mainly for people in environmental systems engineering, petroleum engineering, mining engineering and energy engineering within the Department of Energy and Mineral Engineering, as you see from this. It's a blended class, so some of it's in class like this, and portions of it are online only. Um, certainly, I guess it's, in some respects, it's a dual mode class because you can take this class completely online, concurrently with everyone doing it, whoever wants to do it in a blended form, and only turning up for four things, three midterms and one final. And so those are the only in-person components that have to be done if you choose to do it that way. I used to take it a bit personally. We've done it this way maybe for, uh, since 2012, I think was the first time I recorded it. For those of you who are here early, you've seen this little countdown thing on the screen. This is being screen captured. It'll be posted on YouTube later today, um, and you'll be able to view it online through YouTube, through this course resources page that we uh, mentioned here. And so it'll go exactly in this spot here. And right. instead of finding out about what we did last year as an introduction, uh, which is what this is, uh, you'll see that probably things don't vary very much in terms of what I talk about. Um, but that's uh, made available to you to uh, prosecute this class as you, as you so wish. So it's up to you how you wish to, to go about taking this class. 
in blended form and, and otherwise. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. So syllabus. Syllabus at the front, under your feet. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, and I'm a funny guy. You should have fun with me. Um, it's a rigorous class, and so um, you can take it in either of those modes. Um, we meet here. Uh, the text, as I checked on Friday, was not in, uh, but you can get it online. I'm not sure how you choose to get your books these days in hard copy or not, but if you want to buy an electronic copy of it, uh, it's, you can go to this link, and if you type in Munson, it will come up with the 8th edition. Uh, is it searching? See if, see if this actually works for me. This one here is the one you want. And so you can get it for a semester for 36 bucks if you want. Uh, I'm not super happy with Wiley. Uh, they should keep me current with an electronic version for free. That's my, uh, my perk, I guess, this class. Those have all died, and they haven't really taken care of me very well. So the book says in the bookstore that it's required. Uh, it's up to you. I think it's a good book. Uh, uh, the notes that we use in the class are taken from it, and so it's useful in that regard. Uh, but it's not mandatory. The homework assignments are not from Munson 8th edition, which is this one that you're looking at now, but they're actually from the Munson 7th edition, which are served to you on canvas behind the firewall. And so there's nothing for this course that you absolutely need this text for. Uh, so if you want to get another different text or an earlier edition of this available online uh, gratis, then that's up to you. And so it's, I think that's a choice that you, you might want to make. And so it's a good book, and the previous editions have been equally good. They haven't changed so much uh, in some respects. So you can get it either served electronically to you for the semester. Uh, you can probably get a permanent edition on your computer. Uh, you can certainly get a hard copy version when the one comes in the bookstore. Uh, it used to be that the one in the bookstore was also a, um, a paperback because it was missing two of the chapters that we don't use. We don't do work on turbo machinery in this class, and we don't do compressible flow. Uh, and so Wiley made us a Penn State version, specifically this class, that was devoid of those two chapters. I think it was in black and white rather than color, and was uh, somewhat, somewhat cheaper. Um, OK, so that's the, the material. Most of the, uh, the other material for the class, if I go back, are some course notes. And this is a big file, 50-some uh, uh, megs, actually downloads quickly. And you'll see the first page that we're using today, which we haven't used very much, and some other stuff we'll use today. But these are basically the material that we'll use uh, in the presentations and in the recorded material as well. And so uh, for 50 megs on your computer, it's probably worthwhile downloading that in addition to the, uh, the, the syllabus which you have. I'm here. Uh, my office is in 231 Hostler. I don't hold particular office hours. The door's usually open. You're welcome to drop in. Um, I think we kind of have a hierarchy of, uh, of help to you. Um, Zach is available. He's going to make office hours available for 10 hours a week uh, in time for you to drop by conveniently for the uh, Thursday um, submission of homeworks each Thursday starting a week on Thursday. Um, and so he's your first port of call. Uh, Jihao, if you don't, if for some reason that doesn't click or doesn't mesh with you, then Jihao will set up an appointment with you. And the, the final port of call, you might never want to see me, but you're welcome to come and see me. And uh, I'm the, the final port of call in, in 231 on the second floor of Hossler. So I'm in most, most afternoons are good. I think if you want to drop by and just say hi, I think it's good. Uh, I, I'm not so excited about sitting down and saying, well, you know, question 1.2.3.7, uh, this uh, symbol here, what does it mean? I think you want to, to high grade those with, uh, uh, with Zach maybe first uh, before you do that. But come by and say who you are, where you're from, what your aspirations are. I get lots of um, requests a year, two years, three years, five years down the road from people who've taken this class. Will you write me a recommendation for grad school? I say, yeah, sure. Who are you? <laughs> And uh, my, my comment always is, I'm happy to write your recommendation. I can say that you scored an A, an A minus, a B in a challenging course in fluid mechanics, and that's it. 
And so perhaps this isn't the class to, to be able to do that because there are 160 of your colleagues and it's tough to remember who 160 are, but uh, I wasn't sure that I knew Zach before, but I, I know Zach from, from last year. I recognize him from sitting in the, in the arena. He, he came to classes, um, which isn't a requirement, by the way. Many of you will choose not to uh, after this class. Uh, and I used to take that personally and used to interject little personal messages about uh, exams, uh, material on exams coming up, uh, but I'm way over that. I don't do that anymore. Everything that is said in this classroom is recorded in the YouTube videos, and if you see those, you, you know everything that's coming up. So anyway, so that's where we are. So uh, Ji Hao is a grad student, just about to finish his, uh, defend his PhD, um, and so that's kind of the, the hierarchy that we have. The online resources is that page that uh, we've just looked at. Uh, serves all many of the things that you want. Of course, you can see, I don't see any from 2012, but the thir certainly we were, ah, yeah, okay, so 2012. We're certainly doing this um, seven years ago. Uh, so that contains all the material that you need. So this is, I think, the go-to place that uh, you have. Uh, the only things that aren't available on here are the things that I'd like to go to Canvas to get and that after you have this class today, you should go to Canvas to get. And those are the two things. The homeworks, which are um, the seventh edition homeworks from Munson, uh, which will be what you use and submit online. Um, and also the, um, the exams. So the exams and worked exams are available for the past decade. Uh, let me try again, If uh, see if Canvas will work. I'm guessing that, I guess it depends on my phone. If my phone still has no service, then uh, I'm still screwed. I'm still screwed. And so, so we won't do that. Um, but I guess uh, we have that material online. So next time I'll come to class, I'll log on with Duo before I come to class outside. And so then it will work. But if I look now at this class, you can see the inner workings, of course, of someone's system. What have we done? So this is what you'd be able to download. So for instance, you'd be able to see that from last year, the first exam that you had, the worked example anyway, is something that looked like this. And it has the works working for it, for each of the, the questions. The original uh, script that was given, this is kind of a working copy. This is the exam as given. And so those things are available to you uh, online. So I would say that, we'll look at it in a minute, but 75% of the grade of this class is on the, the midterms and the final. 15% for three midterms, 45%, and 30% uh, for the final. So it's heavily weighted on exams. Um, Perhaps that's not so desirable in some respects. Some people don't perform uh, their best work in exams, but certainly it's uh, the one way that um, ensures or nearly ensures that you do your, your present your own work. And so that's what it's, what it's uh, related to. And so um, I'll show you maybe next time when I can get into Canvas exactly how to get the, the exams which are there. Um, I don't know whether uh, on this I probably have the homework stuff there somewhere. Course resource materials, sixth edition. I don't see it right now, and I'm probably not going to look for it. Oh, yes. Homework solutions. There you go. Homework problems. Yeah, okay. So that's the second thing that you should download. You should download the exams today uh, from Canvas when you can get onto it, and you should download these homework questions which are from Munson, but from the seventh edition, not the current <coughs> eighth edition, which might be the one that you are planning to buy or not planning to buy, whichever. And so they're there for all the questions. The other um, admonition that I have for you is that although um, the homework questions are worth 15% of the grade, I caution you to not think that if you're acing the homework uh, questions that you might ace the uh, course because they're good tasters, I would say, in terms of kind of introducing you to the, the things of this class. But I think the exam questions, and that's why you should look at them, are slightly different and perhaps more challenging as 
kind of multi-part questions. You know, you'll see in these that these are single questions. Uh, actually, you know, tell me what the dimensions are for this expression. And so we'll talk about that starting tomorrow, but that's probably something you can do now without too much uh, problem. But there's never been, as you'll see from the last 10 years, there's never been a question on the exam that's been only that, that hasn't led into other things. So don't think that the, um, the homework questions, although good exercise uh, to practice your skills, if you're acing them and have zero problem with them, then take the next step and go through the, the exam questions. Okay? All right, so where are we? So we're working our way through the syllabus, are we? Uh, can you see this, by the way? So we know the course resources page. All the stuff is served on to you and that. The prerequisites for this are two math 250, 251, and physics 212. I would say that for this class, what you need from math 250 and 51 is to be able to integrate and differentiate, partial differentials, uh, chain rule differentiation. If you have that, you probably have enough to be OK in this class. Uh, and from physics 212, which is dynamics, you need to know F equals MA. F equals MA, of course, is the equation that we'd apply to the, the Saturn V rockets. Weight of the rocket acting against gravity, um, the thrust of the rocket, uh, accelerating it. If you know the mass of the rocket relative to the thrust, the net force on the rocket, then you can calculate what the acceleration is. If you know what the acceleration is, you can uh, determine from that the velocity, and you can also determine the location with time. You know, classic dynamics 212 type stuff. And so those are the kinds of things that you need in this class. I personally don't uh, enforce prerequisites, um, uh, just because that's my philosophy. My philosophy is that uh, you're adults, you're 20 plus, uh, definitely adults. You should be able to drink already in my mind, but uh, that's a different question. Um, and so I'm happy to treat you as adults. I expect the same back in return. I'm happy to call you by your first names. I'm happy if you call me by my first names. There's, there's zero hierarchy in this place. Uh, but by assuming that you're adults, then that with privilege become, comes responsibility, of course. And the responsibility is that uh, you make sure that you have the prerequisites yourself uh, in your own way, not necessarily legislatively in terms of having taken the classes, but be able to, to cover that material and be responsible if you don't have it uh, and it's going to cause a problem in your program to be able to get that information at the same time as you're taking this class or check the class materials to make sure that you do have the, the background to be able to, to do this. So I can't guarantee that no one will disenroll you if you don't have the prerequisites. I know that I will not. I think that you will not get disenrolled uh, this year, but I think next year the university will implement the fact that if you don't have the prerequisites or aren't taking them concurrently, then they will um, uh, statutory disenroll you um, from the course. So that's against my philosophy. However, my philosophy is that you're responsible for those prerequisites. Don't expect to come and spend two hours sitting with me to talk about F equals MA when you should have got it elsewhere. So, so that's it. So with privilege comes responsibility. And I presume that the prerequisites issue is only probably a very small fraction of our class. The um, materials for the classes are as uh, defined there. There are 50, 13, not approximately, but exactly 13 assignments which are due at midnight on Thursdays, starting not this Thursday, but the Thursday after uh, Labor Day. They're delivered online, uh, so you do them as multiple choice questions online. You get three attempts to do them, um, and it shuts off sometime after midnight. Uh, midnight is the time. Midnight on Thursday, Thursday is the deadline for these. And so, and there is no recourse, of course. Um, if you don't get them done by then, then don't send an email at 5 after 12 saying, oh, I forgot to do it or whatever, because I know you're texting me from the bar, probably, and that's fine too. But, but yeah, take responsibility and do them. And, and even if you do miss one, it's worth 1.15% of your total grade. And so rather than um, grovel or, and, uh, Keep your self-respect. Just if, if you miss it, yeah, let it go. If there's a, a real problem that you tell me two days before that you have a family funeral to go to, then hey, that's a different thing. But um, we're not able to reset, quote unquote, the assignments because it 
zeroes out everyone's scores as far as I think. Connection lost. This is my little pad that I have here. Uh, so. There is a group uh, presentation that you'll do. Uh, it's at the end of the syllabus, not on the pages that you have, but on the one that you'll download online. And we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, we'll split you up into groups at the end of the third week, and uh, you'll have to work with those groups of unknown people to make a three-minute video upload onto YouTube that talks about some interesting um, fluid mechanics-based problem, and we'll talk about some of those in a little time. Uh, the midterms are uh, on the evenings of three Wednesdays uh, in the term, and so if you look at the fourth page of your uh, I think the fourth page of your notes. You don't have the color, um, but this little uh, calendar shows you what's uh, online and what's in class. So we are here today, Monday the 26th. Um, we're in class the first four weeks. So the, the notations on this, the horizontal lines are the material up to the first exam. So these lines represent the material up to exams one, two, and three, et cetera. Um, the blue circles is will be posted an online uh, review of the exam, going into the exam to at least clue you into what might be on it. Um, the red uh, circles are the Wednesday evening exams. They start at 8 o'clock in the evening. They're 90 minutes. Uh, and we always populate those for four hours until midnight if you wish to stay there. So there are 90-minute exams, um, so they would be ostensibly over at um, 9.30. We ask um, students not to leave before 9 o'clock and allow people to come in from other classes. Some of you in petroleum and natural gas engineering might have a fluids and rocks uh, uh, lab class, uh, a section on Wednesday evenings that runs until uh, 9 o'clock, although typically it's finished much earlier with Zulema. And so that allows those people to, uh, to join us. Um, if for whatever reason, medical emergency, in sparing cases, we grant um, uh, conflict exams. Um, the conflict exams are slightly different from the, they're not the same as the, the scheduled exams. They can't be, of course. Um, um, and so they're not so well defined in terms of the scheduled exams, because the scheduled exams, I'll tell you exactly what topical areas they would do. We don't do the same with the conflict exams. It's from all the material that would occur in the, uh, the three weeks or so uh, before that exam that's, that's fair game on that exam. So please mark uh, 8 o'clock onwards on September the 25th, October the 23rd, and November the 13th, I guess. For, for that. Um, uh, and if uh, you end up having to need a conflict exam for whatever reason, you have to show a doctor's note if you're sick and that kind of uh, verification, just to be fair to everybody else. Um, certainly we've had people try and do the... Well, whatever. So you have to just verify that that's the case, that you have a, a legitimate reason, and we will accommodate that. Conflict exam will be one sitting at some convenient time that all the people can take it. Uh, and, and that's that's fine. Okay. So uh, the other twist in this, which is actually in your benefit, is that the, both the midterms, which are worth 45% total for three of them, and the final exam, which is worth 30%, are all graded out of um, not 100%, but 110%. And so you can score 110% on a 100% exam, which is why when we look for TAs in this class, people can score greater than 100% for the class. And so the two things that allow you to score above 100% are that on 75% of the grade, uh, you can get an extra 10%, so that's 7.5% extra. And also, for the online content, there are um, optional quizzes for you to take if you so wish that can boost it by 7%, roughly. Yeah, well, it will boost it by 7%. There's roughly seven weeks of those. Uh, on, not, there's actually six, I think, actually. But the bottom line is 7% plus 7.5% means that your final grade is out of 114.5%. And you need 
100%, to get 100%. And so if you get 114.5%, people don't, but some people get pretty close to 110, uh, then that's what you take home. The grade divisions are 93.3 uh, for an A, 90 for A, A minus, etc. cetera. Um, and so if you get 114 or 110, you don't get any better grade, just the satisfaction of knowing what you got, I guess. Uh, but these grade divisions are all out of really 114%. So some things uh, are present in your favor. However, uh, and please note this. If, if you note one thing that coming out of this class today, open your ears now. Always, despite my uh, prognostications and warnings to the contrary, the first exam is always a bloodbath. I don't know why, but it always is. And so I don't know if it's a mixture of my over-exuberance in writing the questions because I've got too much time on my hands uh, at the beginning of the semester, or the fact that the class or the, the broad, the, the, the community at large doesn't quite believe me that you need to kind of uh, take this, the class seriously. Uh, the homework examples, as I said before, aren't a true reflection of exactly uh, what the level of the class is. The previous exam questions are. So please, the one thing to take home today, it's on the front page of the resource materials that we looked at when we, uh, we first started. Download the homework, download the, the um, exams. They're all worked. You can see right now from not 10 years worth of previous exams, 2009 to 2018. They've changed format, you'll see, uh, but the last five years have been pretty static. Uh, they're not multiple choice, they used to be. That was, a, that was ridiculous, it was terrible. Um, and so you'll see also that the questions don't repeat. And so my biggest commitment in this class to making it fair and making it that you present your own work is that uh, cheating is, is pushed off to the sidelines. And that's the, the way that we do it. And so please uh, go and take download the midterms uh, so that maybe this will be the first year. It would make me the happiest guy in the world if instead of coming in at the end of the first exam, we weren't talking an average of, you know, 53%. <laughs> if we weren't talking about an average of 53% uh, out of 110, uh, I'd be the happiest guy in the world, as indeed would you. So the best thing to set yourself up for the future is to, to, to take this class seriously. Because it's prosecuted online and you can do it, don't let it get away from you if you choose to do that. Uh, so... I'll say that again multiple times, but it's, it's much easier for you if you don't start the class on a back foot at the end of September with a, a score that, you, uh, that you're not very happy with. Incidentally, many people recover. Uh, typically, the, the first exam is a, a low score, the second, third, and the final, because they're a bit more formulaic and a bit more predictable, mainly, in terms of recipes. Certainly, exam three on pipe flow and exam four, which is supposed to be comprehensive, but is, is actually uh, squeezed into a 110-minute period instead of a 150-minute, 90-minute, no, not 110. Yeah, it actually is a 110-minute period. The, the final is actually, for its weight, is probably easier. So take the class serious and see what's, what's going on. Um, what else? Well, you can s read most of the things I've said if you choose to look through... Uh, the material here, which is written out, and so I perhaps won't go through that again. I should ask people if they have any questions. Uh, I'll keep on going, but I should ask first if you have any questions about the prosecution. It's kind of fast and furious, I know. Yes? I was just going to ask, um, formulas, are we expected to memorize them? So to the uh, exams, you get to take in a two-sided sheet of paper. You can put whatever you like on it. You can put prior exams. There's, we don't check. Uh, so, yeah, so you, you don't expect to, to, to know them. So, was learning team online Yeah, no, you, so you do, you do the questions and then you answer online quizzes for those questions. On, you submit it online, basically. So, is it like a... Multiple choice. Like a, like a scan you want to do no, no, it's, uh, you go through question one. It says, question one, what are the units of this equation? Uh, a is mass, uh, B is mass length, uh, C is mass length time, D is mass length time t 
to the minus 5. So Those are your three choices, so you press your right choice. And that correlates to the sign yes. of the Yes. Okay. Yeah. It pains me that... Let's see if I can do it. The other thing I've got, I've got my... Uh, Oh, let's do it since that's a question. See if I can uh, work it on, see if it'll do it on canvas this way. So the passcode. Usually needs to take a few. Let me put this handy dandy light on so I can actually see it. Oh, there we go. 358305. It, it has to kind of reset itself in some respects as well. It comes, it comes up with a timestamp one every little while. Just one of these little deals here. So I guess duo authentication is kind of good, but nah, not always good, right? So now another one. Eight hundred three nine eight six. Eight hundred three nine eight six. I'll try one more time when it renews, and then we'll give it a sh give it a rest. Great reason to come on Wednesday. Come on, what can I say? Two three five eight zero one. No, so it's going to work. So I'm going to have to to wait for that. The other thing. Uh, apart from my smiling face that you have access to that we've, we've mentioned, uh, is that uh, the reviews, which are the, um, the posting times of which are the, re the blue circles. So by Friday on the previous week, when we've finished all the material up to that time, they probably actually go up earlier, then you can uh, go to look at the reviews for the classes. And so you can check this with the material from last year, from the first midterm, for instance, exactly what the, the stuff is. And then finally, accelerating static, static fluids, fluids uh, which we talked about. And um, so if you look forward. here, there are three questions. The exam is 90 minutes long, but you can state. You can't hear this. I can hear it on my computer. But I'm saying there are three questions. The exam is 90 minutes long. And the questions are based on ideal gas, which is uh, in the first week of classes, the, the second week of classes, third week of classes, um, question on fluid pressures, on structures and failure modes, and on linear accelerating fluids. And so you get some clue as to what's going on. And if you zip through the video, then there's a quick recap of the material that you might want to have on your equation sheet uh, to recap it. And in the idea that sometimes less is more, so if, if you look at this, this little review session goes on for 20 minutes by the looks of it, 25 minutes. I guess I could do a review session which could go on for three hours, but that perhaps wouldn't help you as much as a review session that maybe goes on for 20, 20 minutes or so. And so this just covers all the material within the first three weeks from fluid properties, fluid statics, and accelerating fluids, which is what comes up in the, the first test. And so you, you can check the material on this for the review session with now the material which is on the exam, and you can determine yourself whether I'm a liar or not. And uh, I think you can come to your own conclusion, and uh, I'll leave you to, to do that. But you'll see it, they correlate. It's not a bad deal. And so that's what you get in the scheduled exam. If you choose to take the, uh, or have to take the, uh, the makeup exam, we don't have that much control over it because we just have to throw some questions together that aren't the same questions as you had before. Can't use one from previous exams because those are all out there. 
And so, uh, so, so that's, that's the deal. And so you'll see that it's a relatively short sheet of equations, but you can bring into your, the exam an equation sheet that has everything on it. I see postage stamp, uh, if you know what postage stamps are. Of course, of course you do, but it's something that's slowly becoming obsolete, isn't it, as well? Postage stamps views of one pages uh, for homework questions, and people have all kinds of things. That's okay, because the questions are uh, unique, and you have to think about them there. So I think those are aids to you getting through, uh, but they're not the be-all and end-all of your uh, class. Okay? So, lots of stuff is served to you online. So, that's um, the review notes. What else? <clears throat> Anything in the syllabus we haven't covered? I guess grading policy. <clears throat> These are the reading assignments, should you choose to, uh, to do them, together with the um, homework questions. Uh, so, these are the numbered homework questions, but those are given to you on a sheet on Canvas, as I mentioned. Um, the in-class in and uh, online stuff is identified most conveniently, I think, in this. You'll know when we're going online again. Um, academic conduct, well, you, you're bound by Penn State's uh, academic conduct policies. Uh, work together by all counts, but submit your own work. Uh, you, you know this, we won't uh, belabor that. Um, class attendance here is encouraged for the times that we're to, together, but you may choose that that's not for you. And if that's the case, then so be it. Um, I haven't counted how many here, but I know that our numbers shrink uh, monotonically as we go on. There's some people are on campus for maybe for thermo after this. I don't know if Lubisha has that class. Uh, and so you come in on the bus and you, you just need to be here and you happen to be here. Uh, some people come because they want to be, and some people choose to do it online. Absolutely uh, up to you. Uh, so encouraged to participate, but if you choose not to, that's fine. Um, there are other materials online uh, that you can access. I guess they download. It's a Word file. Students with disabilities, extra time for exams, policies, kind of boilerplate that Penn State requires. Uh, we accommodate those things, but you have to go through the proper channels to go through disability services to do that. Plagiarized, plagiarism and, and all those kinds of things. We don't need to, to go through that. Uh, what else? Um, any more questions? No? So it pains me that I have to do this, but you, you're all too familiar with this, uh, is that you know if there is a problem in the class, then you need to know what to do. I think it's a lousy classroom for that because of just the, uh, the layout of it. There is no back uh, exit. But if there's a problem, then get the hell out of here. Uh, and if you can't do that, then hide. And at some stage, if it becomes so bleak uh, that it looks bad, then fight. So run, hide, fight is uh, the, the mnemonic, I guess, that describes what you, you might do. What else? Um, I, I guess I was going to download, if I look at this. Group presentation examples. All right, so that's there. So let's see if these are here. So the group presentations are things where a group of you will get together. Uh, is that not opening for me? Oh, yeah, it is. And it's pretty straightforward. It's worth 10% of your grade. You work together uh, in a group that hopefully it's thinking about coming uh, up. You'll work in a group, uh, I guess I didn't really want presenter mode actually. So it's presenter mode on my screen. Uh, that. Play from start. Yeah, I don't want presenter mode. You see it properly, but I see it in the, yeah, I still have it that way. It doesn't matter. I'll use it that way. And so, uh, the rationale is that after week three, when people have added and dropped and people have arrived on campus, we'll set up groups, we'll choose them randomly. Typically, we have uh, 60. We want groups maybe of three or four. So maybe if we have uh, 160 students in the class, which we do, we have groups of four uh, to have 40 groups. And they're assigned, so you don't get a choice of who you work with. And you make uh, a little 
three-minute presentation about some curious uh, fluid mechanics phenomenon. And so one example for this that I use, which I think is instructive, see if it'll work. Uh, oh, yeah, it'll work. Is this. Too old, of course, to have known the Poseidon adventure in its raw form. You might, this is uh, Nielsen, right, from airplane movies, which are also ancient for you as well, of course. But Poseidon Adventure was about a cruise ship going across the ocean, uh, and all of a sudden, shock horror gets hit by a tsunami. Uh, and this is the, the story of that. This is the trailer for that. Uh, and blah, 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 we're having a good time. Gene Hackman, which you may or may not know. Of course, we know that tsunamis don't exist as waves like that in the middle of the ocean. We know that they may be a few centimeters high. They get big when they come on shore, and they don't come in as a breaking wave. Uh, but this wave hits the boat. It's not showing. Oh, dear me. Thank you. <laughs> Why not? OK. Well, I was, I was just, I was, had a lovely picture of what was going on here. Uh, let me close down. Now it's off. So if you show this, all right. Do you see that? You do see that. There you go. That's exactly the part I wanted you to see. So it's a movie that happens to make a point, but the point is that there's a tsunami which isn't real. But the question is, is that a real boat getting hit by a wave in the middle of the ocean, or is it a model? What do you think? Model. Yeah, model. That's what I think. So how do you know? Sorry? Yeah, that's a good reason. But that's not a, that's not a scientific <laughs> reason thing. So anyway, so uh, what you could suggest, if I go back to this and we get this back, is you can make a couple of uh, hypotheses about what's going on. And I would wager that one of the visual clues that you pick up is that you see this ship being hit by a wave, and you see the water droplets. If you look at the water droplets, they're big. And so the question is, in real life, do water droplets that you see in rain, for instance, have the potential to be the size of your head, or a baseball, a basketball rather, or bigger than that? And so we, don't, we never see that naturally. And so, for instance, you could, with the material from this class, figure out exactly what the maximum size of a raindrop can be. And it's a very simple analysis. You can go through it by this. You make a sphere. You cut the sphere in half. You know that the, the water is held together by surface tension. So you can write a little equation that defines exactly what the balance between the surface tension holding the mass of water inside that shape is. And you come up with a maximum size, which is not very big, five millimeters, a, a fifth of an inch. So that's one reason that you might think it's uh, a model. The other kind of subliminal cue, I think, as well, is that if you look at the rate at which water is moving relative to that boat, you know that gravity always pulls things at a given acceleration. Things fall at 9.81 meters per second squared. And so if you see things in a model moving at that speed, which they have to in the model, if it's in the background of moving against something which is a foot tall but is really uh, 40 feet tall, because it should be a boat, and you see it moving very quickly, that's another visual clue as to why it's a model. So I think those are two at least defensible uh, hypotheses that you can advance as to why you pro no, only few of you wanted to say it, but perhaps all of you figured it out, was that it is a model. And so those are two reasons that that might be the case. Um, I think there's a second example. I guess that perhaps will work equally poorly. Uh, let me get out of uh, and show. See if it comes up with that. It's thinking. There you go. Professor, no, now you have to believe that I'm a cool professor relative to this guy, right? 
And so another question. So, so the idea is for you to pull something offline, find some curious fluid mechanical process that isn't altogether obvious, uh, and be able to uh, define very straightforwardly why it might work, and be able to explain that in a three-minute communication that you record with four of your teammates to do something. Um, in the syllabus, it doesn't make it in the copy that you have, which is just four pages. But if you download the full syllabus, uh, it has, at the end of it, this material that makes not only defines exactly what the grading policy for this is in terms of the, you know, the five steps that you have to do, um, but also says, uh, gives you some examples of what you might do. There's always people who want to, why does a spinning football find its mark? Uh, do you hear the shot that kills you, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole bunch of things that people typically do. Uh, we try and make sure that you submit your idea of what you might want to do early on so that we don't have any duplicates. We used to do this with presentations in class in week 13, immediately before spring break. Now we do it that you post it online, um, uh, and, and that's it. 15% uh, of that grade is a peer review. And so if you choose to uh, abandon your colleagues and do nothing, then they probably will uh, not be very happy, and they will perhaps uh, strike back at you for that. Um, and that's, that's probably it. Did I say something, some magic word? <laughs> so I have a question here. But before I answer that question, remember, d download today, before next class, uh, both the homework, but most importantly, the exams off Canvas, which you will be able to log into, and start familiarizing yourself with that, because that should be uh, the one thing that you use to guide yourself in this class. A few syllabuses left. And I'm happy to take questions now, or if you want to come and chat with me about prerequisites or anything. Thanks very much. Have a happy day. If this is the last time I see you, have a happy semester.